first of all, thank you for your um, great introduction. <laughs> and um, thank you for inviting me to um, have a workshop with TDSW. Actually, when I'm studying touch designer, I used a lot of your workshops <laughs> to study. Um, so I was really happy when you guys invited me. Um, yeah, so to talk a little bit about myself first, um, as already um, told in the introduction, <laughs> I'm um, a media artist and um, I also do touch designer tutorials and um, workshops. Um, I'm originally from Germany. Um, where I lived in Berlin until I was 19 years old. And then I moved to Seoul, South Korea. And I have been living there ever since. So it's been around six years now. Uh, and yeah, so the tutorials and um, workshops I do usually are mostly in Korean. And I'm kind of actively trying to grow our local touch designer community. Um, so for today, I'm going to talk about data visualization in touch designer and um, how we can create uh, data visualization in touch designer. And this workshop will kind of be split into two halves. So in the first part of the project, we're going to talk about more theoretical, theoretical stuff on how to approach creating data visualizations. And then in the second half, I will kind of go through how I create data visualizations in Touch Designer. Um, so yeah, let's start. Um, so first of all, to kind of give you an overview of um, why I'm doing this workshop or how I'm approaching this workshop. Um, last year, I did this teamwork um, called 2020 um, Monolith with um, two other Korean artists. And um, this is a two channel video um, representing on one hand data visualization about um, COVID-19 cases in the United States um, by race. And on the other hand, there's um, this creative creative interpretation about the data. Um, so um, the idea behind this project was um, just as we are experiencing the, um, the pandemic, there were a lot of news about um, racism, especially last year, um, Black Lives Matter was like really huge in the beginning of the pandemic. Then there were all these news about um, how time feels super weird in the pandemic since everyone is in lockdown and nobody really goes outside. And then all these news about suicide rates like rising and um, domestic violence becoming more frequent because people can't leave their homes. And then also recently the problem with um, Asian hate um, being really heavily talked about in the media. And for this project, we kind of wanted to um, show how the pandemic um, what effect the pandemic has on us, like culturally and socially. Um, and we were looking at a lot of um, different data from um, all kinds of resources and then like mobility data from Google, like how much do people move? And then also like Twitter trends and also a lot of news articles or anecdotal um, just data and we're just thinking about, okay, how can we express that, wow, well, what we're experiencing right now is real. And at the same time, what we're experiencing right now is going to have a huge impact on our lives in the future. So I came across this um, data set by The Atlantic. Um, they have this um, COVID um, tracking project, and they have a data set that is um, organized by race and ethnicity in the United States. 
um, maybe let me show you. I actually didn't open this. Yeah, so, and what they found is that um, nationwide black people have died at a 1.4 times the rate of um, white people. So this data like clearly shows um, all these in inequality and all these problems that were kind of amplified by um, COVID-19 that they existed before, but we kind of were able to ignore because we're leading our very busy lives, but now since because of the pandemic, all these problems that we could ignore before were kind of becoming very, very real and very clear. And um, so I decided, okay, this would be a great um, way to show that um, COVID actually has an impact on our lives. Um, kind of black and white, like, <laughs> wow, this is really happening. Um, and then on the other hand, um, like on the other side, you can see like a more creative interpretation of this data. So this is um, uh, a monolith that first of all stands like just normally there. And then as time goes by, um, it kind of leans, starts leaning to one side until it nearly falls over in the end. And it was kind of, um, we kind of used it to show that, um, to show um, that maybe what really matters in our lives as well in the time of a prolonged pandemic, um, it's not just how am I gonna survive by myself, but what, what does this Im impact have on all of us? Um, and just really show, okay, we are, we're going through a shift right now. And um, the reason for actually um, choosing a monolith is because when you look up the word monolith, it has um, two meanings, one being just like a huge, large stone structure. Um, but the other meaning is um, monolith is a large and impersonal political corporate or social structure regarded as um, inter interact interactively invisible and uniform. So I thought it was a great um, way to visualize this uh, message. So, but looking, the reason I'm talking about this project um, looking back now, nearly one year later, um, I feel like the data visualization part was not uh, maybe done the best. <laughs> it could have been um, maybe done better. So um, yeah, there's, my, there's not enough context um, in this data visualization for the viewer to really understand what they're looking at, at just, um, one glance and but at the same time there's maybe too much data at once that is being presented since this is also not static it um, changes over time um so i was kind of like okay how do i create better data visualizations therefore better artworks like what can i do to improve and i kind of decided to um start at the beginning like, yeah, just start at the beginning. Um, okay, I'm gonna just learn how to do data, data visualizations really from the basics. And um, yeah, that's what I'm gonna share with you today. So our content is kind of like this. Um, we're just gonna first gonna talk about, okay, what is data visualization? Um, how do I find data sets? How do I use data sets? What kind of data is there? Then um, how to process data. Um, then on the next step, how to visually encode data. And then also some techniques for visualization data and touch designer. And then last but not least, we're gonna do some.